Good morning to everyone. I am Alessandro Greco, um, a, PhD, a second year PhD student at the University of Padova. And today I am going to discuss with you about a very fascinating topic, in my opinion, which is cosmic barrier bridges. So first of all, let me thank you, the organizer, for this nice opportunity, Cosmology for Moon. It's a very nice initiative. Uh, the content of this talk, you can see from the title is Cosmic Perifringence, Cross-Spectrum, Cross-Bispectrum with Symbian Isotropies. It's also the title of my recent work with Nicola Bartolo, my supervisor, and with uh, Alessandro Cuso from Inat Bologna. So let me thank them for their help in giving this talk. So I think that a good thing uh, in order to start is to, to start with our best friend, CMB. Because you know that uh, and B, cosmic microwave background radiation, is nothing but a remnant from an early stage of the universe. And B is also polarized at the level of a few micro Kelvin, the E modes and B modes. And um, you know that the main physical process which induces B polarization is the Thomson scattering. In particular, B modes of CMB polarization are a smoking gun relation because they are generated, yes, by gravitational lengths of B modes, but also by, and primordially, by gravitational waves produced during inflation. So that's why they are so important. But the important fact is that B modes and D modes polarization are uncorrelated in the sense that if you compute the cross correlation, the angular cross correlation between them, you obtain a parity breaking object. So in analogy with electrostatics, when you have that electric field transformed in a way and the magnetic field in the opposite way under spatial inversions, that is under parity, the same happens for SMB. The B modes and the modes are uncorrelated because the cross correlation is parity breaking. So CMB can be seen also as a very efficient natural laboratory for investigating deviation from the standard Maxwell theory. And that's why I'm here because uh, our best friend, which is uh, the CMB map, is a witness of something which is primordial, which is the first emission of photons. And so we can use it to test deviation from the standard and current cosmological paradigm of, uh, which is related to our common understanding of electromagnetism. Now, the modified electromagnetism that I mean is the following one. You know that in the max standard electromag electromagnetic theory, you have that uh, there is this Lagrangian density, which is the contraction of the Maxwell field tensor. And you have the, that uh, when you consider a linearly polarized electromagnetic wave, they just propagate and the uh, polarization plane is not rotating, of course. The situation changes when you consider a chern sign modification of electromagnetism, when you have an extra coupling between the Maxwell field tensor, the, its Hodge dual, which is proportional to the levi civita symbol, which is parity breaking as an interaction because you know that the levi civita symbol is anti-symmetric by definition, and this new mysterious field chi via this dimensionless coupling, constant, uh, coupling function h of chi. This vision changes because we have, you can see from this nice picture that uh, when you consider a linear polarized electromagnetic wave, it propagates, but its polarization plane, it's rotating. And so a phenological consequence of this extra coupling between photons and the new field chi is by refringence, which is the in-back rotation of uh, the polarization plane during the electromagnetic waves propagation. So it is related also to cosmology because for example, the electromagnetic that are described in photons emitted at the SMB, well, is uh, affected by this eventual phenomenon because uh, the linear polarization of SMB radiation is described by this linear combination of Stokes parameters that are in turn related to E modes and B modes. And it behaves as a spin of fields. So the chern Simon modification of Maxwell theory induces also a rotation of the polarization blade by an angle alpha, which is called the Biofringes angle, of course. And so the Stokes parameters that you observe after the propagation of the wave are rotated too. They, um, they are carrying signature of this Biofringes phenomenon. So you see that this uh, CMB sky as we observe today after the propagation of the photon is no more that you have at the that you had at the last scattering surface. So you have that uh, there is this rotation of the Stokes parameters, and so this modification of the CMB polarized fields. And the barefringence angle 
it can be shown that it is proportional to this difference in value of the field chi. So this angle alpha, which, is, can be, which can be measured by observation of cell B, it's related to the physics of the mysterious field chi. Investigating cosmic perifringence can help us in revealing the nature of this mysterious field. For example, it could be early dark energy in the form of an amber Goldson boson, or it can be dark matter in the form of an ultralight action. And you know that action are quite popular recently in cosmology. So cosmic perifringence, it's fundamental uh, as a new uh, way to test actions and so new physics and so new physical paradigms. And that's why I think it's so interesting and so fascinating as a talk. Oh, a brief sketch of the biofringence mechanism. You have some photons that are emitted at the last scattering surface. They, the electromagnetic waves propagate and you observe them today on Earth. Well, on, on Earth, but on the, thanks to CMB experiment, for example, this is an, a nice picture of the uh, future CMB experiment, the light bird one. And uh, during the probation, they are modified by the interaction with the new field chi, which is cosmic barefringence, so this effect. And so, and, and also, they are also modified by gravitational lensing, because you know that the presence of the, last, the large scale structures on the photon's path modify, modifies the photon's path in turn. And so, you have a mathematical description which is able to describe. This, um, to express this modification of the CMB polarization, because you know that the, this linear combination of parameters is changed by cosmic perifringence because we have this rotation. And then you have also another modification, which is induced by the modification of the line of sight of photons, because uh, they experience the interaction with the uh, lensing potential. However, the important fact is that there are also observational constraints on isotropic cosmic perifringence. The fact is that cosmic perifringence impacts on symbiotic observation, producing a mixing of E and B polarization modes, which is otherwise null in the standard scenario, as I said at the beginning of this talk. If the rotation angle is isotropic in the sky, you have that alpha is just a number, alpha zero. And we talk about isotropic perifringence, which is currently constrained by measurements of CMB polarized data in the sense that you have the standard CMB uh, spectra of lambda CDM and other two ones that are identically zero in the standard scenario. And cosmic perifringence modified because they induce an uh, extra term and for example, produced a non-vanishing value for the cross spectra that are parity breaking in the standard scenario. That is the cross correlation between, between B modes and the other fields. Of course, if you set alpha zero equal to zero, you find again the standard result. Um, and so you can use the uh, Planck data or WMAP data, as in this case, in order to constrain alpha zero. And here I'm reporting the most recent results about this kind of analysis. And you can see, that, uh, thanks to this data, you can see that alpha zero equal to zero is excluded at the 99% of confidence level. Of course, if this data will be confirmed, it will be revolutionary because it will be uh, a sort of signature that our common understanding of the electromagnetic theory is strong. And uh, there are some corrections that are visible only on cosmological scales. And so that's why cosmology is so fascinating, I think, if you allow me to say that, because it allows you to study something which is uh, fundamental for like the electromagnetic theory inter. So it's really promising as a, a, a topic, cosmic perifringence, I think. However, I'm not working on isotropic cosmic perifringence, but instead on the inosotropic component. Indeed, the inohomogeneity delta chi and field chi at the last scattering surface can induce inosotropies delta alpha in the angle alpha. It's possible to expand the inosotropic cosmic perifringence angle on the sky as the standards can be observable, so via spherical harmonics. And in literature, the angular polar spectra involved in the anisotropic cosmic perifringence uh, have been computed, and it is constrained by observation. Um, for example, here I'm just uh, showing you the most recent uh, upper value, most recent results about the constraint of anisotropic cosmic perifringence. 
this is the constraint on the autocorrelation of uh, isotropical and isotropical refringence and its cross correlation with same big temperature. And here there is the, the, the new and most recent map on the cosmic, and I think also the first one, on the cosmic refringence angle map from the public release tree of the Planck data <clears throat> for the commander compound separation method. Thanks to Marco Bortolami for this nice work. You can uh, find it in his uh, recent paper. So the point is that we have some constraints, but in our work, uh, which is this paper published on the Journal of Cosmology Particle Physics, um, we have considered also three-point cross-correlation function of an isotropic cosmic refringence as new cosmology observables in order to find new way to construct cosmic refringence. So this is the object, the mathematical object that I have computed, the three-point cross-correlation function with the refringence angle and the observed the same fields. Observe in the sense that they account for weak gravitational lensing and the eventual refringence effect. So here inside, there is encoded the refringence phenomenon. And they have found that this bispectra, this five bispectra, can be seen as new cosmological observables are non zero even if the fields involve a Gaussian, even if the delta alpha is uncorrelated at 2.11 with 10B maps, and encode signals of parity violation. So they provide a new observable to test cosmic refringence and an additional code synthesis check for present constraints and for specific models. But how is that possible? Because I mentioned that uh, these are these are three point correlation function, but they also said that uh, the fields involve regression. How is that possible? Well, the fact is that uh, the harmonic coefficient of the CMB polarized uh, fields that are predicted by lambda CM are modified by cosmic body fingers because you have this new term in the, the expression. And so when you compute the cross correlation between these fields and other fields, you have new term that can able to switch on a sort of non, non primordial Gaussianity. In the sense that when you compute the bispectrum, it is non zero, even if you have no primordial non Gaussianity, because you have a sort of observed and propagated, not non primordial non Gaussianity, which is induced by this new term these new fields inside the polarized field. And in order to find uh, some plots, some result, uh, we have assumed that uh, delta alpha is uncorrelated with the rotators in the fields at the, at the two point level. The underlying computationary model is such that uh, it is party conserving. So no cross correlation uh, primordial between uh, T and B modes, uh, E and B modes. The rotator and the fields of CMB and delta alpha are all Gaussian random fields at the primordial level. And the cosmic barefield spectrum is assumed to be scaling variant as a, as a sort of toy model test. And the, uh, we have obtained these plots. These are the plots of, for a specific configuration of the CMB, sorry, of the cosmic barefield by spectrum uh, when you consider just a single polarized field, E and B in this case. And we obtain these plots with class by accounting for lensing effects and dual tensor modes. And we have repeated the same analysis also for the, um, the case in which you have a true polarized field. And you can see that you obtain a zero result in some computation, even if the isotropic angle is equal to zero, and even if the sum of the multiples is even or odd. And this means a parity breaking signature because you know that there are some restricting uh, selection rules in order to have a parity um, conserving by spectrum, but we obtain non zero results in both the cases. So that's why we, saw, we, we said before that uh, I said before that uh, by refringent by spectra are encoding parity breaking signatures. But in order to have uh, an estimation of uh, what is the amount of signal in our new cosmological principle, we have performed a Fisher forecast in order to estimate the signal to noise ratio, the SNR of our perspective. And we have assumed a regime of purely anisotropic by refringence, as that we have taken as a fiducial value of the alpha zero, the value of zero. And we have specialized our analysis for a light bit like experiment with no foreground and with simple experimental characteristics. So the analysis is quite standard. We have assumed 
the standard form for uh, the unbiased estimator from the observed angular average spectrum. We have considered a covariance matrix and we have computed them. And we have found these interesting results for the lightweight experiment. You can see that if we take the amplitude of anisotropic cosmic refringence to the level of the present constraints, as in this case, we obtain that there are two promising bispectra, delta alpha TB and delta alpha EB. Their SNR with these parameters is larger than three. And this is really promising because it means that uh, these quantities are competitive with other way to constrain cosmic by refringence. And so I think that it, this is why uh, I'm a bit proud of this work because uh, this quite this amount of SNR is uh, promising. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are some limitation in our analysis. For example, we have not considered foregrounds, but in any case, we have also made some restricted assumptions. So I think that there is a, a sort of compensation. We have been really conservative for some point of view, and not so conservative for other ones. So I think that a natural uh, extension of the analysis would be to be more precise about it. The conclusion and put to prospect. We consider a well-motivated parity relating extension of electromagnetism because I, I didn't mention before, but this kind of interaction is predicted by string theory. So cosmic perfusion and cosmology to poor can be used to test new physics like string theory and in general physics actions. So, um, this uh, extension induced the phenomenon of cosmic refringence, and we have computed the cross by spectrum of ionosotropic angle with CMB method. We have obtained non vanishing by refringence by spectrum even under some restricting assumption, Gaussianity, no true point correlation function, um, parity conserving inflation. And we have estimated the SNR for our vector for an idealized lightweight like experiment, where formulas have been neglected. And we have found that we can look at the alpha TB and alpha EB by spectra as really promising new cosmological observables. So a natural development of our work should be to repeat our analysis by relaxing some of the phenomenological assumptions that we made before in this research. So a scaling variant CL alpha alpha can be relaxed. We can use a more interesting model, or we can make some forecasts for other futures and be expected. Thank you for your attention, and thank you again for the, uh, to the organizer for this nice opportunity. Goodbye. <laughs>